Hey, hello. Listen, let's get into it. This is really quick. Although I have five things, it says three things Tony Khan can do to boost his ratings and to get more people to come over there and look at that bullshit he got pushing. Look at that. that look at that. Um, that trap house he running. <laughs> Here's the three things for a casual. Someone called me a mark, and I, I'm not even going to lie. I had to Google it. I don't think I'm in mark territory. Yes, I do have a wrestling podcast. Yeah, I got some wrestling merch. But I don't think I'm, like, marking out. Like, I'm not Vince Russo. Now, he's a mark. Although he thinks he's eviscerating the marks. Vince, Vince Russo is, like, the biggest blow mark out there. Anyway. All right, we're going to start backwards, and then I'll tell you the top, the number one thing that TK could do. So, now, I'm going to start, I'm going to give you five, and then we'll get into the top three. Number five, social media coordinator. These are honorable mentions. I think his social media over at um, AEW sucks. The difference between AEW social media and WWE social media is simply that there's someone running WWE social media. The only thing I've said is that they should separate the artist from the art because when you got Rhea Ripley giving Google eyes to, uh, what's his name, Jay Uso, and then you go to their Instagram and she's in a wedding with her husband and Jay's playing with his son and kissing his wife, some people are slow. Some people are cognitively delayed and they don't get that this is all role play. So what you want to do, kind of like Rikishi, he, he clearly was confused somewhere and he thought his son's family was going to be destroyed. And I'm going to talk about that another time. Um, uh, that's probably the only thing WWE doesn't enforce. I think that should be enforced. It should be two separate uh, social medias. Let WWE run the WWE social media. You can pop in on any other time. And then you got your own personal uh, social media. Uh, there is no protocol over there. That's why you got Britt Baker making comments. And everybody going back and forth and fighting with people. They need to get their social media uh, 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 pulled together and structured and put some rules on it. That way it will keep down the drama that you all claim you hate when it happens. I personally... Enjoy it. I don't see a problem. Number four, the presentation of the show. WWE is sports entertainment. And guess what, guys? AEW All Elite Wrestling is sports entertainment. I understand that they are like, oh, no, we're not. Yes, we are. Now, the thing that WWE did that has ha that seamlessly worked was they are pushing a more sports-based presentation while still doing the... Uh, sports entertainment like stuff so you still get the storyline you still get all the little goofy shit but when it's time to do the sports a la the athletic stuff it's very apparent that they're trying to make it a little bit more uh what is it reputable make it a little bit more like if you see andrade and uh, Santos Escobar on TV you're not going to be like oh listen these motherfuckers no you're going to be like wait a minute wait a minute look how he handling that man it looks clean seamless it's it's moving AEW although they are doing that their, their um, wrestling is very uh, athletically centered it's more exhibition exhibitionism I don't know if I pronounced that right it's more exhibition matches than engaging story which is what all you all were complaining about and i see it because i'm watching AEW, and i'll just be literally sitting there watching it like i'm i couldn't tell you why people are fighting if it makes sense why does everybody have a championship whoop, 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 whoop. so their presentation um another thing about their presentation is the lighting is a little bit it's a little bit rough you need to you need to bring a little bit more light into the arena and I think polish your wrestlers more. Um, Mercedes Monet, Sasha Banks, looks like the biggest thing in the entire company because that's what she looks like. And then you have her in the ring and the person looks like they just got up and they run into the store for some milk and like some, you know, some products down to the Kroger's. 
you have to start having your stars look more polished in terms of presentation. Those were four and five. Now we're in the top three. So for number three, what can TK do to boost his ratings? In my opinion, number three, simple stories. Now, I also complain about stories being so fucking simple that they're damn predictable. If TK wants to kind of get people to be looking, he can start there. The story can be as simple as what Triple H got, Drew McIntyre, and CM Punk doing. They're literally fighting over a bracelet. Okay? That you can't get no more simple and elementary than that. Um, There's no need for people to be drinking blood and taking pounds of flesh out of each other in order to convey to the audience that there's beef. You can make the beef personal. You have when you do it with Christian Cage. He talked about how people's daddies is dead and stuff. That's good stuff. But people outside of Christian Cage who has a very huge presence and is a, a child of the WWE, the ones that aren't, you can give them storylines that work. Kind of like, um, who y'all dropped the ball on? What's that sexy one? Oh, my God. It's the one I said give to the ladies. Wardlow. Wardlow, you can give him a storyline, for example, that not that he wants to be seen and he's running around. You can give him a storyline like, why doesn't he want to be seen and he's running around? And then come to find out, he back there fucking all the um, the female talent. Something as simple as that. Attitude ever-esque, right? Um, more simple stories, more stories that will pique the attention of the audience. Listen, a lot of people think us wrestling fans are stupid. That's why a lot of advertisers don't want to advertise to wrestling fans because they think we're stupid and don't have money. So with that being said, it's nothing wrong with using like Looney Tune type storylines to get the attention of people to watch your stuff. We literally sat and watched the Coyote run down the Roadrunner knowing full fucking well the Coyote is never going to get me me never going to get him. But we watched it because we knew when the Coyote put the anvil on the edge of that cliff and he sees the Roadrunner right at the bottom looking up that he's going to run his stupid ass down that damn cliff get to the bottom see that the Coyote ain't there the coyote has stepped one inch to the left, and then the anvil slams. No, the, the, the road runner steps one inch to the left, and then the anvil slams the coyote in the head. And then we all bust out laughing. We get a payoff. A payoff, Tony, is what the people want in their stories. Not just move to a story, and everybody's like, well, wait a minute. Wasn't he? All right, number two, the women. I know a lot of men, wrestlers, a lot of the incels say women wrestling suck. They don't want to see the women. Whoop, 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 whoop. I also say that too much sex coming from the woman will dilute the woman's division. But let's be clear. Women are sexy. Everybody wants to look at them. And when women are wrestling, it's a novelty. Okay? That's why WWE had women wrestling in muds and panties and bras. Now, we don't want to go to that, go back to that Stone Age type of thinking. But what we want to do is give women time to wrestle and give women storylines for grown fucking women. Okay? What am I talking about? Bitches don't have to be in the ring slapping each other because you call me a bitch. I'm in the ring slapping the shit out of you because I'm tired of you talking shit to me. You look nasty. Um, you keep looking at my man crazy. You on, uh, uh, what, Instagram talking cash shit about me. I told you when I see you on one site and I'm going to fuck you up. That's a grown woman's story. Even though it's still catty and stupid, the way I just delivered it to you sounds like two grown women about to fucking fight. As opposed to, oh my God, you hit me with a shoe. Why are you doing this to me? I beat the blood out of you. And I loved you and want to have sex with you. Now, I'm, I'm using Tony Storms and Mariah Mays. Their um, back and forth is cute. It's super simple. And it's cute at the same time. And it doesn't seem elementary. So, 
I guess they are kind of moving towards that, but I can't tell you why Statlander is moving the way she moving with Willow Nightingale. Now, that probably doesn't happen. I told y'all, every time I turn on AEW, I fall the fuck asleep. So, overall, what I'm saying when it comes to the women's division, I need y'all to take the women a little bit more serious, just a little bit more seriously. Okay, when you got Mercedes Monet and the fucking pariah that is Britt Baker cutting these terrible ass promos, don't nobody give a fuck about that match or that TBS championship. Because when you get in the ring, make sure that the money is in the register. It's like, girl. And then, yeah, because I will pull all your molars. DMZ. Don't nobody want to hear that. Like, let's do a little bit better. What is the number one thing that Tony Khan could do to boost his ratings? Family friendly. Oh, my God. You thought I was going to say something else? I am a family. When I go out, I have family that goes with me. <laughs> we all have to be entertained. I would never take my son to an AEW show because it does not look welcoming. It looks dank and moist and funky in there. We done been to plenty, plenty WWE shows. We done been to house shows when they're not televised. And it's been welcoming every time. Okay? He does not feel like he don't belong. He can sit there and listen. Yeah, you might get a bitch or, or, or you know, uh, basically a bitch here and there. Or some type of, like, sex joke that only adults get. But it's it's sometimes some of that stuff AEW does is a little bit too vulgar, okay? It's it's a little bit too much. Like I I wouldn't bring no seven or eight year old to an AEW show, but I will bring them to a WWE show. Um, they have to be a little bit more welcoming to families. It just it just is what it is. Uh, you will get more merch sold. You will get more kids locking in the people, especially if you have people. Like uh, Wardlow, I'm going back to him, being just big, strong, and I could do that and like kind of like the face of, you know, the children going in, talking about books and school and stuff. Now, if they are doing stuff like that, well, where is the advertisements for WWE has WWE Cares and they go around and they, they do community work. I don't know if AEW does any of that. And because WWE does community stuff and they advertise it, it looks like they are immersed in the community. They make the place welcoming for everyone. If you're in a wheelchair, if you're blind, if you have sensory issues, all of these things is what get people going. Now, I do remember Brandy Rhodes had did something huge where she was uh, tackling the sensory issues for some of the fans who attend AEW so they can come. But I don't know if that's still being... Um, you know, pushed or whatever. You have to, in a climate where you have a presidential candidate calling people who don't got kids cat ladies, and we understand that the people that run these wrestling promotions are extremely conservative and probably promote that shit in their private lives, then that means that you should probably be leaning towards that. Families should be all up and through that audience. There's nothing wrong with toning down some of that shit. You could do all that blood, guts, and dicks, and pussy all on the pay-per-view. What people pay for it. It doesn't have to happen every fucking Wednesday night. And, and you know, no one's watching Collision and that other shit. I forget it comes on every Friday and Saturday. So, we just being honest. But I'm going to leave it there. So, just to recap real quick. My top three things that Tony could do to boost his ratings, ratings is simple stories more attention to the women and family y'all tell me what y'all think in the comments if you got other things that tony could do put it in the comments if i'm wrong about what i'm saying please let me know i would love to hear your thoughts if you made it this far i 